you know what, even if you think you've reached perfection, it's still not perfect because you're going to learn something from it. You're going to learn that you've missed this specific detail, that specific detail. So I think my personal recommendation is hit the road running. Don't delay. Don't wait. Don't waste time. And that's the most important thing, right? Is delaying time, waiting to, for the perfect time to raise the money or to, for the perfect pitch deck just delays your capital raising. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, and this is the show where we talk about how to attract funding for your deals without ever even having to ask for money. Well, my guest that we've got on the show today, I'll tell you what, he knows a lot about raising private money. He's raised over $50 million in private money. Well, he's been in the industry for more than 10 years. He's been acquiring, flipping, developing, and financing over $500 million in real estate. Well, he's the co-founder co and managing partner of States Capital and also a nationwide lender called We Lend. So we'll be diving into that. Well, first of all, real quick, who or what is States Capital? Well, it's a private debt fund focused on making short-term bridge loans secured by first lanes on real estate. And State Capitals allows accredited investors to invest in real estate without the risk of owning real estate. And then his other company, We Lend, that's a nationwide private lender focused on providing quick and low cost capital for investment properties. With that, in just a moment, I'm so excited. You're going to be meeting my special guest, Ruben Iskalov, right after this. Well, hello there, Ruben. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. This is an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Well, you've got all this experience in raising private money for real estate deals. Can't wait to dive in. And so with that, you got two companies, States Capital, you got We Lend. I, I want us to start our conversation for the audience, for the segment of the audience that's listening to this show, who are real estate investors that are looking to start raising capital for their real estate deals, or maybe they are a seasoned real estate investor and now they just really want to grow, grow their business. So you raised over $50 million in private, uh, private lending. When you started, how did you go about attracting the money? Because if you've raised that amount of money, which you have, I know you haven't been doing much chasing, begging, persuading. You are probably of the same philosophy as me, and that is attracting it and not chasing it. So how did you start out? So I got to tell you, I mean, the, the way in which I, in my opinion, it, to start out in raising money is the people closest to you, the people that have known you for years, for decades, and so on. Those are your friends and your family, right? The only way that you know you can really get them to write a check, other than the fact that they trust you, is to also demonstrate your experience, your wherewithal, your abilities. So it's very easy to do in today's market, in today's world, with social media and technology. You know, today I pride myself in the fact that every single person that I know, know ex exactly who I am and what I do for a living. You know, I have a lot of friends that I've known for probably since elementary school. And from time to time, I still don't understand or know what they do. The complete opposite with me. Everyone knows that I'm a real estate entrepreneur. I buy, sell, flip, develop. But most importantly, I also lend money through WeLend and States Capital. So everyone around me knows exactly what I do and that if they ever wanted to invest into real estate, I am their guy. So I think first things first is you've got to make sure that people know what, they're, what, what, what you do for a living. In addition to that, you have to demonstrate to them that you know what you're doing. Outside of the fact that they know what you do, you've got to demonstrate to them that you know what you're doing. So the way in which we do that and we pride ourselves in doing that is through social media. You know, we're very, very involved on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn on even TikTok, right? And even on WhatsApp, I think WhatsApp has the option to uh, post stories. 
So what we do is make sure that we post the deals that we've just recently funded or the deal that we've just recently purchased and now we're flipping and the exit strategies that we're seeing also with the performance that we're capturing. So I think that's really where it all begins. So I want to dive into that a little bit on how to leverage social media. So when, <clears throat> let's say we've got a real estate investor that's focusing on single family houses. What advice would you give on how to leverage social media to where it keeps the audience engaged? I mean, it's one thing to just give facts, but it's another thing to tell a story. What advice can you share on that? So we thank God today, WeLand is large enough where we have an entire marketing department that strategizes and puts a plan together, not only on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, semi-annual basis, along with an annual basis. That is very important, but that only comes in scale. You got to get there, right? But prior to that, the way in which we did it, and we did it in the most basic level, and then it just kind of, it compounds and it grows on top of each other. You lay the foundation, everything grows on top of each other. If you look at one of our first posts that we made about WeLend, it was the most simple and basic post. And I, I, I suggest and recommend that everyone go on our, 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 our social media platform on Instagram. Our handle is WeLend LLC. You'll see, and just scroll down, you'll see the first post we ever made. It was so basic versus what we have today. And I tell my marketing team, you never delete that. And the reason why I say that is because to encourage people to start with the most basic thing. And as you grow, as your progress progresses, so will your posts and so will the way in which you post about it. What we like to do and what I like to pride about is discussing the deals that we're buying, discussing the deals that we did not buy. Sometimes that's more important than the deals that you actually bought. And the reason why I say that is because then you're demonstrating to people through the captions of the post, right? There's a post under the post, there's a caption in the caption of the post. And I like to do that on LinkedIn. If you guys go out on, on my LinkedIn, on my personal page, obviously Ruben Isgalov, you'll see some of the deals that I discussed that we passed on or some of the deals that we've just recently funded, which demonstrates my track of thinking for my investors. Right. They know, all right, this guy really crosses every T and dots every I. Is it always perfect? It never is. Right. Mike Tyson says it best. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. But nevertheless, nine out of 10 times, if we execute on exactly what we plan on executing. So when you are posting, uh, is it videos or is it uh, images or both? So, you know, I, I personally like to post just images um, on, my, uh, uh, on my page, but on my story, right, on my story, it's really videos. We discuss, you know, mainly the type of deals that we've purchased, the type of deals that we've executed, the type of deals that our borrowers have purchased. That's also very important because then it demonstrates exactly what we do throughout the day and showing everyone and letting everyone know exactly who we are. I love it. So. You've been raising capital for quite a few years now. And it um, never ends. It never I, ends, Jay. <laughs> I know it. I know it. So, you know, if, you, if you asked me 10 years ago that, you know, if I would have raised X amount that we have today, um, would I be happy? I would say, oh, that would be the end of it for me. This is exactly where, that, this is exactly where I want to land. Guess what? It never ends. It's never enough because as, as you raise money, your company grows, you grow, the deals that you're making grows. So it's never enough. Don't ever think, and make the same mistake that I've made that I just want to raise this amount and it, it, it'll stop there. No, you got to keep growing. Amen, brother. So I want to extract some lessons learned that you've learned along the way from when you started raising capital until where you are now. Um, any lessons learned or not to do that maybe you have done in the past, anything you're doing different today? on raising the capital, any advice you give for someone that's starting to raise capital, don't do that, quote unquote. I'll tell you what I, I, I think one of the mistakes that you know, a lot of new investors have, um, they don't prepare enough or, and or they over prepare, right? It's never gonna be perfect, right? What, what we've learned is you need to have the basics when you go to an investor, right? You need to have, the property, just at the very least, needs to have a good picture about it. You need to have some highlights of the property, what you're planning to do with it, right? In other words, it's an investor deck or at the very least a one pager, but you have to know the details and specifics of the property of the deal that you're looking to raise money on. So I think that, 
you know, one, some people don't do the bare minimum, which is put some type of investor deck or a one pager together. And the investor decks shouldn't be long, you know, at most maybe 10 to 20 pages slides long, um, or they over prepare, they over obsess, right? And they want to run for perfection. But you know what, even if you think you've reached perfection, it's still not perfect, because you're going to learn something from it. You're going to learn that you've missed this specific detail, that specific detail. So I think my personal recommendation is hit the road running. Don't delay. Don't wait. Don't waste time. And that's the most important thing, right? Is delaying time, waiting to for the perfect time to raise the money or to for the perfect pitch deck just delays your capital raising. I would also suggest, you know, from time to time, putting feelers out there, right? While you're putting this investor deck and you might be shooting for the stars of perfection, start putting feelers out there. Call your investors that you're thinking and planning on calling and saying, hey, look, I got this property on 123 Main Street. I'm thinking of buying on it. Again, I'm still doing my due diligence. This is what I think my cash on cash will be. This is what I think our RIR is going to be. This is what I'm offering you. If I had a deal of that caliber, would you be interested? Still putting all my due diligence together to send it over to you. And I think in the next couple of days, I'll have it. But I just wanted to get your input on it. And the reason why I do that personally, and I suggest people to do that as well, is because it shows the people that you're raising money from that you're not just jumping the gun and you are trigger happy. You are doing your due diligence to make sure the deal makes sense before you buy. Now, a lot of times while I'm doing my due diligence, after I put the feelers out there, I didn't execute on the, on the deal. And I have investors calling me saying, hey, I know you called me about this property address. And most of the time I give them the address, depending on who it is. Sometimes I don't. And they ask, are you, are you buying on it? I'm interested in it. I want to deploy some money. And when you tell them you didn't execute, and the reason why you didn't execute is because of these reasons, and you list them down, they're going to say again, oh, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. We like the way they're thinking. And that's the most important thing is just making sure that your thinking is aligned with your investors. I love it. You know, in my experience, <clears throat> Ruben, there's been um, uh, the worst time to be raising money or trying to attract money is when you actually need it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> When you actually need it. I mean, I mean, you know, one of my one of my favorite uh, sayings is desperation has got a smell to it. Totally. And, and if you're coming across that desperate, I mean, they're gonna run. They're gonna totally. run totally. And so what I like to do, of course, everything I do is single family houses. Um, and you're doing well, well, share with everybody what type of properties are you doing that you raise money for? So look, I would say a good 95% of my day, um, if not sometimes even 100, really goes um, towards WeLend and States Capital. So WeLend is the originator for States Capital. States Capital is where the investors sit to fund and originate, well, fund the loans that the originator WeLend is bringing to the table. Um, essentially, we focus on one to four unit, multifamily and uh, mixed use properties throughout the nation, right? So we'll finance up to you know 85 to 90% of the purchase price We'll give the, the borrower, the sponsor, 100% of the construction cost. The construction never comes to the closing table. Um, and a lot of our borrowers don't like that. Well, the reason why we don't do that is, again, we want to make sure that we're aligned as lenders, as, as investors, along with our borrowers. And we want to make sure they always have skin in the game at acquisition. So we'll give them, again, 85 to 90% of the purchase price, 100% of the construction and the loans are usually made for a period of about 12 months. Most of our borrowers today, they're buying properties for value add reasons, right? They're buying physically, financially distressed properties throughout the nation. They're bringing some you know, TLC to it, sometimes even major work, vertical, horizontal extensions, conversions from a single unit to a 10 unit, um, conversions from a you know, long stay hotel to a multifamily building. We've done that you know, quite some time, uh, quite, quite a few times. So that's really what we focus on today. I would say a good portion of our time is dedicated to that. Excellent. In case somebody's got to jump off early before we don't finish the show, I want, you to, go ahead, I want you to go ahead and give out uh, your website for sure. WeLend um, so everyone can uh, not miss out on that. Of course, we'll have all this in the show notes, but go ahead and give out your WeLend website. www.welendllc.com. Um, you could also visit us on all major social media platforms. Uh, the handle is WeLend LLC. Okay, wonderful. So let's move over and let's talk about States Capital, what that is, dive into that a little bit. Um, so tell us about States Capital. 
Sure. So it is a 506C Reg D. Um, essentially, it's an exemption through the SEC. It's a it's a debt fund. Uh, we raise money through from accredited investors, mainly friends and family, along with our own personal money as well. Principals, myself, along with my partners, are personally invested along with our uh, uh, investors in the fund. And by the way, that's very important, right? You know, one of the things that we've learned is having to raise 100% of the money that you need for the deal without bringing any of your own money doesn't align your interest with your investors. Most investors, including myself, even when I invest into a deal with some of our borrowers from time to time, we never, ever want to give them 100% financing or 100% of the equity. We want them to have skin in the game. So we are personally invested into our fund. Um, essentially, our strategy is to perform for our investors, uh, making sure that they receive passive cash flow while being in the safest part of the capital stack. And what that essentially means, and just, just to kind of walk you through it, is there are different type of stacks in the capital stack, right? In other words, you being a lender is in the safest part. Now, it may not be yielding the greatest and highest rate of return as a deal as you would be in, a, in an equity stack, right? Because as an equity, you have a little bit more risk. You're exposed to it naturally because of your position. But it is bringing mid-team returns today. We're very proud of that. We're very happy with that. And so are our investors. Excellent. So again, States Capital, that is a private debt fund that individuals can invest in. And then those funds that are invested in States Capital, your originating company, which is WeLend LLC, um, you all originate that and then, you know, loan that, loan that out and et cetera. So, totally. so yeah, to that me. point, forgive me, Jay, um, to that point, you know, essentially States Capital is funding the loans for WeLend, right? And that's where, you know, the, the ability to earn the passive income for our investors comes in because as the borrowers are paying us, we're paying our investors. Exactly. Now, how can someone learn about States Capital and investing in that? Does that have its own separate website? Yeah. So you can actually find it on our website, wheelandllc.com. If you go on to the invest with us tab, it'll have all the information there for you. Happy to jump on a call with any investor and discuss their ability to invest. I do have to caution every investor that it is only for accredited investors. Um, you know, non-accredited investors, we just, we can't accept their investment. Sure. Sure. And that's because of how the, the fund is set up. So, when someone is interested in investing uh, in States Capital, typically how long are the notes or how long will their investment capital stay in the fund or is that flexible? It, it is flexible um, to a certain degree. So, you know, what we like to do is kind of separate the type of investments that are out there in real estate. Well, one, there is debt, first lien positions recorded on the property, personally guaranteed by the borrowers, along with a pledge of shares from the principles behind it, which is what we do at States Capital. The other form of investment is being an equity investor into the deal, right? A lot of times when you invest as an equity investor, you become essentially, if you're doing a preferred return, kind of like a second position, right? So before anyone takes out their money, we as WeLand take out our money first, which is the beauty of what we do, because that brings us again to the safest part of the capital stack. For example, Jay, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you've, you've taken on mortgages before. I'm sure you've brought on investors onto your deals. So have I. But before we and our investors take out the deals in the deals that we're buying, the lender is always repaid first. And that's exactly where state's capital sits. So it is a much safer form of investment. The loans that we make is for 12 months. They're usually repaid within eight to 11 months. So naturally, when you invest into state's capital, the lockup period is usually for about 12 months. Okay, that makes sense. So I mean, it's not, it's not like a syndication to where it may be locked up for three years or, exactly. or, or five years. Exactly, exactly. So it is, it is a lot more fluid um, and it's not locked up for a very long period of times. Right, that's wonderful. Well, that's great because you and your companies are actually serving two different markets. You're, yeah. serving, you're serving one market they wants to be a passive investor, but they don't want to go out there and negotiate deals and, and do value ads. They just want to sit back and get a nice return. Right. Um, and then the other market you're serving are those that real estate investors that need to borrow that money, um, you know, through your, through your, we lend arm. What would you say 
so let, let's speak to the real estate investors that are listening to this show or watching it um, that want to investigate the way land, you know, services and borrow. What would you say are some of your defining differences from say other lenders uh, out there that loan on, uh, on real estate? And what is like some of your advantages that um, your borrowers uh, actually really like? So I'll tell you, um, one of the key differences is that a lot of times, you know, some investors, they don't like to borrow money, right? From a lender per se. They like to go out and raise the money individually, deal by deal. You know, and they like to raise 100% of the money that they actually need. That complicates things because you need a whole hell of a lot of investors to deploy some of the deals, to deploy money into some of the deals that you're buying or that you're finding versus working with a private lender. And the reason why I say that is because as a private lender, this is our business is to give you up to 90% of your purchase price, give you 100% of your construction costs. All you really have to come up with is about 10%. So that's one of the reasons why borrowers or real estate investors need to be working with a, a mortgage private lender like ourselves. What differentiates us versus all other lenders and most lenders is the speed to close. We pride in the fact that we close deals in as quick as three to seven business days. Now, I gotta tell you, if it's a returning borrower and if it is a property that makes sense, we'll even fund deals within 24 to 36 hours. Hard to come by, hard to find, right? The only difference is, is that you have to be a returning borrower to be able to close that quick, versus if it's a new borrower, it's about three to seven business days. In addition to that, we fund deals that most lenders won't. So you could have a physically or financially distressed property. In other words, physically, there is a roof missing. Literally, there is no roof. Or you need to close within 30 days. There's, there may or may not be access into the property. That's okay. We'll lend on that. In addition to that, we don't ask for tax returns. We don't ask for bank statements. We don't ask for your W-2s. We don't really care in terms of your personal income. What we do care about is the asset. That's really the focus that we're looking at. Now, we do do a background check on the borrower. We do check their credit to make sure that they have sound credit and that they can actually refinance the deal and take our loan out in the future in the event that they choose not to sell the property and they want to hold it in their portfolio. So there is still a component in checking the borrower, but really we're focusing more on the asset. And a lot of our borrowers today, they're, they're full-time real estate operators. They're sophisticated real estate experienced operators. They may not have the best credit, right? For us, 620 credit, FICO or above is good enough. So long as you don't have any major you know, lawsuits in terms of you know, uh, real estate deals, or if you don't have any, obviously, money laundering, any type of issues with foreclosures or anything to that effect, we'll lend to you, right? So long as you have the experience that we need. Now, even if you don't have experience, that's okay. We'll still lend to you, but we won't be at that 90, 85 to 90% of the purchase price. We'll be right around, I would say, maybe 70, 65 to about 75% of the borrower's purchase price. So I think some of the differentiating factors from us for us is the fact that we close very quickly. We have a lot less red tape um, and we fund deals that most lenders would really run away from. Well, really what it comes down to Ruben is service, customer totally. service. And, and when I say customer service, I'm, I'm talking speed, speed, because with a lot of the deals that we invest in, um, you can't make money in slow motion. I mean, what I've discovered over the years, I'll get so many more of my offers accepted from a seller because I can close so quickly. Um, for example, not long ago, a few weeks ago, uh, we had a, a, a owner of a property responded uh, or they did a Google search and they found us on uh, Google and the property uh, oceanfront property uh, here at Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, it was going to foreclosure sale in less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. And because of private money, I was able to close in five days, five days. I believe it. I believe but it. Other real estate investors, you know, were making offers, but they couldn't move that fast. So that you make a great point there and your company is able to fund the deal so quickly that your, your borrowers will get more offers accepted because you can fund so quickly. And not only that, like, you know, when I was a full-time real estate operator, and I had the liquidity to buy a deal in all cash because I was able to raise the money or what have you, I would still use a hard money lender. And the reason why is because we look at the deal alongside you. We have our attorneys looking at the title alongside you, right? So there's a lot of checks and balances by having a hard money lender by your side 
because mm-hmm. now you know for a fact that this, this deal does make sense because there's so many people, there's so many eyes on your deal and everyone is rooting for you to win. Perfect. Ruben, it's been fantastic to have you here on the show. And one more time, give out your contact information for the investor side and, uh, and as well as for the borrowing side. I think it's the same website. Totally. You can find all of it on www.welendllc.com. Love for you guys to visit our website. Feel free to inquire. Love to jump on a call with you and answer any and all questions. Ruben, thank you so much. Thanks for joining thank me you. on Raising Private Money. There you have it, my friend, another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming episodes. And if you happen to be listening on one of your favorite podcast platforms, be sure and follow me. We always have amazing guests, just like we had today with Ruben. And I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.